Hi everyone and welcome back to our SINLAB podcast tagged Genotype Testing and Sickle Cell Management. I remain your host, Uche Namadi, and I'm still with the amazing Dr. Olani Uwe, yeah? you. the consultant hematologist in SINLAB Nigeria. In the previous episode, we talked about living with sickle cell, challenges and triumphs. Now we will be looking at advances in sickle cell management and treatment. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Synlab Nigeria on YouTube and Spotify. Dr. Wei, still a pleasure having you here. Uh, Thank you for taking me through a lot of, a series of emotions in the previous episode. Uh, (laughs) I didn't mean that. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so now we're talking about, let's look at the brighter side, the treatment part. Oh, good. So what are the latest medical advancements in treating sickle cell diseases? Oh, that's a very beautiful question. I'm sure a lot of people are itching to hear that. Yes, yeah, so after you've broken our hearts in episode two, I was wondering. Uh, sorry, I didn't really mean to do that. God, I <laughs> yeah, um, for, yeah, there are lots of medical, you know, um, a lot has happened in the, in the area of, in the field of medicine. Yeah. And of course, um, the um, sickle cell disease, you know, has, has not been left behind, you know, in that regard. Okay. You know, it's interesting to note that is one of the most widely studied genetic disorder in the entire world. Nice. Yeah. So that means that, yeah, it's, I mean, the attention of the scientific deck. community, you yeah. know, you, you know, is on it and all that. So um, there are newer drugs coming up now that mm. is actually making, you know, treatment better, more effective. You okay. see, you know, uh, lots of patients living longer lives. Mm-hmm. You know, I could remember a few years back, um, I got a slide from Abuja. You know, I don't know if you remember that time. Okay. And then it was a slide, 70 year old man. Hmm. And I saw sickle cells. And I was, oh, wow. you know, I don't know if you remember th- that time. <laughs> I don't know. But it was something I actually made a little bit of noise about, you mm-hmm. know, you know, on the bench. Mm-hmm. You know, I really wanted to, I really wanted to know who the patient was and all that oh, and wow. all that. So, yeah, you see people actually living, you know, that long now because nice. you have, you know, better treatment protocols for them. So now um, you have newer drugs. I mean, you have drugs that we use now, like hydroxyurea. Initially, hydroxyurea, okay. you know, was used, basically used for for treatment of cancers, hematological, you know, malignancies. But then since the, um, 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 since, since, since it, it got into um, um, the sickle cell, you know, space, it, it has actually been helping a lot of, you know, sickle cell patients nice. because wow. that drug mm. has the ability to reduce the frequency of crisis. Okay. You understand? So because it, it increases the level of fetal hemoglobin, Hmm. You know, in sickle cell patients, and fetal hmm. hemoglobin actually does protect them from crisis. Oh, you understand, yeah. and then you have other drugs like crizalizumab. Hmm. You understand, um, it became approved by the FDA a few years back, and oh, those nice. are newer drugs okay. that you know act more at the molecular level. Okay, I, I really don't want to go much into ah, the science of anything. Molecular level, yeah. So basically, <laughs> um, um, one of the things that you know central to um, you know, the vaso-occlusive crisis, bumping crisis in sickle cell patients. Mm. You know, there's a whole lot of interaction. Please, let me let me just beg you small. No, nah, You know, in to. the first episode, that's why you mentioned <laughs> chronic hemolysis. Our people are no, not that's all trying doctors. to break it down. That's why I'm trying to break it down, Uche. Okay. <laughs> so, help us, help nah. our ministry. <laughs> so basically, um, mm. there is an interaction between sickle okay. red blood cells and then the blood vessels. Okay. So that causes the cell to stick to the blood vessels okay. and when they stick to the blood vessels they impede blood flow because okay. it just keeps sticking and you can imagine blood cells sticking to smaller blood vessels oh, wow. you understand you you know that ha- can actually occlude you know and prevent blood from flowing so okay. you have newer medications that are, can actually you know knock off that interaction okay. and, and not make you know, sickled red cells to to stick. to stick to the blood vessels anymore. So okay. drugs like um, crinzalizuma, like bosentan or something, they are newer drugs, you okay. know, you know, and then they have been shown to be very, very effective also. And then, of course, you also have um, gene editing, uh, gene editing, sorry, okay. you know, we call it gene therapy. Hmm. So um, scientists are now able to actually edit, you know, the genes of sickle cell patients wow. because, I mean, 
I said is one of the most widely studied genetic disorders. So mm. almost everybody, it, it, and it's a single gene disorder. It's not as if you're actually having a lot of mutations. It's just one mutation. Mm. So it makes it, you know, very, very easy to understand. Okay. It's just one mutation yeah. causing it. So yeah. you can edit the, the gene now. And then there are two ways you can do that. You can edit the gene in such a way that you have um, a, 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 a more fetal hemoglobin, mm -hmm. you know, in the blood of sickle cell patients. Mm -hmm. And of course, when that happens, they are not having crisis. Okay. So they're able to, hold, their red cells are able to hold on to oxygen longer mm -hmm. because that's what fetal hemoglobin does, has ability to hold on to oxygen, mm -hmm. you know, longer. So they live, I mean, near normal lives, you okay. know, they're, they're fine. And then another part of the gene editing is for them to actually edit the gene in such a way that you, you, you get, um, um, you, you, um, you have genes okay. in the blood of sickle cell patients okay. that actually produce anticycline um anticycline hemoglobin Okay. So you have a whole lot of those anticycline hemoglobins. That's anticycline. So that means it prevents cycling. Yes. So um, those are the two ways that you can actually do, you know, gene, 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 gene editing. So you can do a whole lot of that now. So you have that also, that's and that helps. Impressive. And of course, um, stem cell transplant. Oh wow. Which is another. That's the curative. You know, that's curative. Mm, that's that's curative. You understand? That's curative. And yeah. then the good thing is that we can actually do that in Nigeria. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so we can do that. Though it's, it's a little bit expensive, but at least we can do that in Nigeria. We don't have to travel, you yeah. know, to actually have stem cell transplant done. Wow. So, so all these things, you know, hmm. we've made the management of sickle cell, you know, better. And of course, the knowledge about the disease itself has increased tremendously hmm. over the years. We now understand it more. We understand what triggers what. Hmm. You know, we understand the science and everything. So... We are able to actually help our patients better. So, mm. and I would advise any sickle cell sufferer to always be regular in clinic, you know, mm. always because, I mean, and trust your doctors because, mm. I mean, you know, um, we, and whatever advice your doctor gives you, make sure you, are, you actually stick, you know, stick to it. You understand. So basically we have all these um, 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 ways of actually managing sickle cell anemia mm. now. So that's why you see a whole lot of them are living longer, that nice. are living better lives. And then, you know, they are they are showing and proving to the world that sickle cell is not a limitation. Yeah. I have a patient who, um, I think he celebrated his 50th birthday about how many years ago now? Um, she'll be in his mid-50s now, maybe five, six years ago, and invited me, sickle cell patient. Nice. And um, he's one of, you know, uh, we are friends, actually, okay. <laughs> because his resilience is, you know, his will That's actually to survive, amazing. you know, and all that. And you know, then You uh, mentioned <laughs> something, sorry. You know, when you were trying to, you know, talk about this, uh, what was it we were talking about? The medical advancements. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so you said, you said, um, scientists are on it. So like all all hands are on deck. So are you, in your opinion, do you think there are, um, or there are promising treatments, newer treatments coming up, or do you think we are okay where we are? I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. No. Well. Um, so are, like, okay. are there promising new treatments coming, or do you think? the ones you've mentioned would suffice or we're good where we are? Of course, we can never really be good where we are. <laughs> There's always room for improvement, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, but then that, that was why I actually used the term newer drugs coming up on board. Okay. The Crizalizuma, Bosentan, they are newer drugs. Mm. You understand? I've not really seen much of it in Nigeria anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, but then there are newer drugs available for treatment and mm. then they are making a lot of patients do a whole lot better. You know, living near normal lives and all so that. So we're not course, sleep, we're not stopping. Oh yes, we're not stopping. So, but where <laughs> we are now is good enough. Wow. You understand? But of course, we can never stop. Okay. You understand? So to, to the sickle cell um, sufferers, what kind of lifestyle adjustments would you, you know, encourage them to develop? Oh, that's a very beautiful Just question. to help, you know, because it's not all about the treatment, treatment part. Mm. You too have to do something oh, as good. the sufferer. Good. So, uh, I think the first thing is for you to understand your body. Hmm. I always tell my patients, the best doctor you can get for yourself is yourself. You. It's your body. If they will say the yeah. truth, though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it is what you tell me as a doctor that yeah. I work on. I mean, you understand your body. So the first thing is we know the common triggers, mm -hmm. you know, for sickle cell, you know, patients, extremes of temperature. 
Hmm. You you know you have that. Then of course exposure to malaria. You know malaria is endemic in this you know mm -hmm. in this part of, of the world. Then of course stress. You know physical stress and all that. These are known frequent triggers of crisis. Hmm. So a sickle cell patient must you know avoid all of that. Then of course dehydration. You don't say. Yeah. So that's wow. why when I advise my patients, I tell them to hydrate very well. At least your know, maintenance fluid every day is about three liters. That's a maintenance fluid. Wow. So even if you are really not even going to override whatever, but at least just make sure you maintain. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that three liters. You know every day. So sickle cell patients must hydrate adequately. Hmm. Then they must avoid all the triggers. Physical. Yeah, extreme physical stress, hmm. you know, emotional stress, you know, and um, extremes of temperature. In cold months, they should try and warm up. Hmm. In very hot situations, they should, they should try and cool down, you hmm. know, things like that. So you must understand that, you know. It, there's a whole lot of people understand the fact that you want to act like, oh, sickle cell is not limiting me. No one is saying it's limiting you, but really you need to understand your body. Do your part. You need to understand. I'm a very active person. I, I do sports. Hmm. Some years ago, what kind I, of sports? I play tennis, oh, long wow. tennis. You know, nice. I some years ago, I really love running on the tennis court. I can rally and rally and rally. But I really cannot do that these days. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So I don't play much of singles. Oh, wow. I rather want to do doubles because I have a partner that is probably carrying me. Oh, east to west. <laughs> yeah, so things like that. Because oh, I've been wow. able to understand because a few times I've tried to mm. be like I was six, seven years ago. Oh, wow. You know? Jesus. I, probably, I don't even want to think about the age thing. <laughs> probably spend the next few days limping around. Oh, wow. <laughs> like an old man. So basically, you really need to understand, yeah. you, know, you know, that fact. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's very, very important for you to understand. And of course, the use of their routine medications. Mm, you really need to understand the fact that I always tell people, um, we are different. Mm -hmm. We are we are just not the same. Your normal mm -hmm. may not be my normal. And of if course. your normal is, you have to be on medications mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. It's your normal. It's better you actually accept that fact. I mean, there are so many disease conditions where people are on medications for the rest of their, throughout their lives. Hmm. Diabetics, hypertensives, you know, asthmatics and what, what have you. So yeah. you really need to understand the fact that, okay, for you to actually achieve your dreams, you need, they say health is wealth. Mm -hmm. You are really not going to be you who you want to show the world that you want to be if you're always in and out of the hospital. Hmm. You yeah. know, so so you really have to understand that fact. So if that would make you fine, mm -hmm. then you really need to, you know, use your routine medications of as your, you know, and be regular in clinics yeah. and whatever your doctors tell you, you need to you need to do that. And another thing I want to talk about here is um abuse of pain medications by, by sickle cell patients. Thank you. you understand? I understand yeah. the fact that. The pain is always there. Sorry, please, because I was going to ask <laughs> you now what should they know about their pain, the pain management? management? Yeah. So, See, please go ahead. One of the things that I've actually seen in sickle cell patients mm -hmm. is dependence on, on, on pain medications, yeah. most especially opioids, hey. because it has addictive tendencies. I mean, it's so bad that. Um, 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 we've had patients in the past that will get admitted to the psychiatric psychiatric ward because of a, a drug addiction. Sickle cell huh. patients. There was one who would use all her salary to buy payments, hmm. and every and she has a child, no wow. husband. It was just her child. Wow. Then she was using all her salaries to buy pain medications to the extent that it took the committee of her friends to take care of the child. She wasn't taking care of her child. She was just using all her salaries. She would even get enter loans and all that to buy pain meds. Do and you then, think it was because the pain was unbearable and she was just trying to do everything humanly possible to be fine? I, I, I think Because she, how you explain the pain in episode two. Ha! Okay. Well. I think she just became addicted Oh, wow. To the pain meds. So even when as I said, there was the pain wrong, is always there. It will always be there. I, yeah. I understand the fact that it's always there, <laughs> and that's why I said there will always be episodes of acute exacerbations of the pain. Hmm. Now those periods of acute exacerbations of the pain is severe pain. When and you of course, say acute, wow. what's it? What does it mean? Acute, <laughs> like exacerbation. Let, yeah. let our people, let the older generation that may not understand that point. Like Understand a significant, you know, 
um, amplification of the pain. Okay. Let me just put it that way. So like the pain, the pain goes from zero to hundred. Two hundred. Okay. Like it goes from zero to hundred in an instant. Okay. That's why oh, I use wow. the word acute exacerbation. Huh. Yes. That's it goes like, like zero okay, to hundred. Okay. pain is even <laughs> gradual. <laughs> so you oh, know, like, wow. like 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 it happens that way. So. Mm -hmm. I know that pain. I, I, I've not experienced it, but I know it can, I've seen in patients how, you know, excruciating the pain could be. So okay. as at that point in time, your doctors know how to manage your severe pain. Okay. So, and um, for a whole lot of us who are doctors, we're always very careful, mm. especially with the pain management of sickle cell patients. Mm. We don't want them to be addicted mm -hmm. to some of these pain meds. So we're mm. always very, very careful. That's our own forte. That's what we do. Mm. But then the advice out there is, I've seen a few patients, mm -hmm. you know, who have been addicted, serious addictions mm. that have affected their careers, their family life. If I could remember mm. then, when I was still in the lorry, a particular um, family, the husband actually came to dump the wife because he was tired. Dump the wife with her parents, oh, you know, wow. because, I mean, he's done all he could, he didn't know. So she had to check into the psychiatric ward. Jesus. So you understand. So, these are some, I'm saying all these things not to scare us, but that's the reality out there. So and I'm, not, I'm not sure you actually want to add an addiction to whatever. So, what so, so it's very, 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 very important. We understand what it is. So for, for the pain that you have, we always advise that you just go, I mean, use uh, drugs like diclofenac, you know, mm. like paracetamol. And if you find out that the pain intensity is increasing, go to the hospital immediately. Your doctor knows what to do. Hmm. So and, and then I will use this opportunity to appeal mm -hmm. to pharmacists, you know, out there because I mean some of these all these drugs are controlled drugs and then they are selling them. Pharmacists you know, or chemists? Even pharmacists wow. do it. No, no. Everyone has a price, hmm. they see. Hmm. So Scary. it's because you keep wondering how patients get, you know, these controlled drugs. They're supposed yeah. to be, you know, controlled medications. They're getting over, they're not over the counter medications, mm. and yet they are getting it. So mm. it's like a passionate appeal to, you know, um, you know, our um chemist owners and our pharmacists out there to actually help us to help our patients. Thank you very much, Dr. Way. Once again, it is <laughs> mind blowing. I think by but with as we go on. <laughs> the I did here where we <laughs> I don't know how else to, to express I love it, but that. <laughs> yeah, like it's quite insightful. <laughs> and I'm sure our listeners are very grateful for this opportunity to learn from this podcast. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Please stay with us and don't go away because more is coming. <laughs> Thank you.